so here are some examples of adaptive instruments um, helping uh, allowing students to help hold mallets or attaching drums to wheelchairs or like the chord buddy down there which is um, the uh, attaches to a, a guitar or a ukulele and you push buttons to be able to do that all right so i'm really what i'm into is more assistive electronic musical instruments and so uh first of all probably the, the biggest one is is the ipad and so even though i will be talking about more devices later on um i'm going to be going through some through uh apps because the ipad is a great uh, assistive electronic instrument so we have apps and we also have devices that attach to apps or connect to apps and I think I only have one or two devices here that like, don't connect to apps. So we're going to start with a balloon and uh, I cut here. Let me bring this up. And bloom is, um, is just a real easy uh, 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 music making uh, app where all you have to do is touch the screen and it will just start. Um, Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Next, I, I didn't I didn't plan on that one. That's that's actually pretty cool having the having the green in there. So kids can just can just tap on it. And you might be thinking, well, that's not you know that's really not much. But actually, a lot of it a lot of it is in like a, a certain key, like would be like maybe in G or something. And so you could have other kids that are in the group. You know, while one student's doing it on an iPad. Provide a beat with a, a bass or a drum set. And if you structure it right, and this this is something that goes along well with a lot of things um, that I'll do with students that are in the group. You know, you might be going, well, they can't really play this this Bloom app along with another group. But you know, if you if you structure the music so that like maybe the beginning starts with this. And then a beat drops later on, then that student who's playing on the iPad is just as much a part of the group as, as anyone else. And that's a UDL uh, approach to it. Because if you were to look at this group and you have one kid who's playing on the iPad to provide this intro, you wouldn't be able to tell if that student had special needs or, or not. So that's Bloom, it's a, fr a free app. Uh, there's also Bloom 10. And uh, regular Bloom doesn't run in the background, but Bloom 10 does. And this one actually costs, so this is $8 for this one. This is, this is an interesting one because you go through different, um, different levels and then you, have to, you can unlock the next one after you go through a level. So that's kind of like your regular one there. And then notice that two will now be open. And so it's a lot, of, a lot of different sounds. And as a teacher, a teacher can kind of figure out which key it's going to be in, and then maybe provide a design, a song around that. And this can run in the background. So uh, the previous app, if you shut it down, it shut, it turns off. This one can keep running in the background, so I'll have to shut it off, <laughs> so it's not running throughout the the whole presentation. And then some other uh, apps by them as well is, is Trope, which is like it's drawing and does the same type of thing, like makes sounds, you know, with that, that, those special soothing sounds. Um, and actually Trope and Bloom, if you got like 10 iPads together in a room and you're doing all this, and a nice comfy chair, it's like, oh. Okay, so uh, Trope, Trope is another app by the same, by the same company, and so is Air and both cost a little bit. No beat, this is another one that's uh, it's just fun to make music with. And that the kids can experiment around by dragging things off and uh, the squares make, make drum beats. Whereas a circle do more melodies. And how far away they are creates the rhythm. The closer they are, the quicker the rhythms are. 
It even has a gravity function where they all float around. Now, you could also use this for um, just doing some dancing stuff, you know, um, having kids dance around to the music. You know, like the kid is the DJ. He, he's DJing the dance and to be able to use this to, to DJ the dance. I'll turn that up a little bit. So really kind of, uh, it's a fun app to fun app to play around with. And then again, you can add a guitar, add a bass in and add some drums with it because you can tell it's got a beat to it. You know, and that could be like the intro for, for a song. So that's node, node beat. Orpheum, probably one of my favorite apps ever. Um, and this is, you can use this for constructing, um, constructing any music that you want. So right now I have it, um, I'll pick, here we go. So this is a uh, seven nation army, which I heard in Jill's presentation, you guys did some seven nation army. So here it is. So this is, uh. So, but that's something that I program. Like if I wanted to change that, uh, so I can change the size of those. I can change the pitch of those. I can change the notes. So I can change the note and the pitch. Like I can make it a little bit flat or a little bit sharp, you know, um, and, and I can make it so it's just one big circle on, on the page, right? So here's smoke on the water. Uh, here's uh, uh, in power chords. And it's, it can also work with other apps. So just that the nice thing about using uh, iPads is that you can use other apps like Thumb Jam. And Thumb Jam has, um, has some really, I think, nice sounds to it. Uh, let's say I'm going to use an uh, electric guitar. All right. And so that's, that sound is coming through. No thanks. And then for my MIDI... I'm going to make it go to Thumb Jam, which it is already. And I'm going to turn off the Orpheon sound. So now it's using, it's using the, the sound from another app in the background. So if you don't like that sound that already comes with, you know, on the, on the iPad, then you can, you can switch it around. This is something where, you know, a kid is going to be playing the bass and, you know, and it, it had three notes in the bass part and that's it, you know. And, and so you, and you add that to a bass patch in another app and you have yourself a bass player. Uh, so for, for $4, I, I love this app because you can, it's totally programmable. You can program how many pads you want on the page. I think you could even have... I don't know, 20, 20 different pads on a page if you want, you know, but these are just the ones. Those are ones I, I programmed for that. So that's Orpheon. And then oh, we did smoke on that. We did like thumb jam. You just already saw the nice thing about thumb jam is you, you don't get the effect on, on the iPad is that you can tilt it and it can do pitch bends, but the, the instrument sounds are so nice. For instance, here's a viola. I'll take the span down a little bit. It just it just has nice sounds and if you have it on a phone if you're hooked up to a phone then you can pick it up and you can actually do some vibrato and some pitch bends with that you can change it so it's a little more slurpy between notes or completely slurpy or not slurpy at all it does a lot of extra things so as far as musical sound uh, musical sound quality. This is probably my my favorite one on on the on the iPad. Uh, Chord Poly uh, Pad. 
another favorite of mine. And this is because it's programmable. So, you know, like a kids are working on a song and you want to be able to uh, a allow a student, um, any student to play any chords they want. So this is, um, this one, all these pads, you can program what you want. Right now I have it on high hopes. <laughs> But the nice thing about how to program it is that um, all you have to do is touch on that button and then push the notes that you want, you know. Oop, don't want that one. And you just, just, just whatever note you want to play. And it programs it in. And you can go full screen, so it takes over the whole screen. Right. And then you can also, um, the, the sounds that you use, you can use the internal sounds or you can do the output to, to something else like GarageBand. So GarageBand, um, another app that has a lot of good sounds on it. Um, that previous one, Orpheon, for some reason doesn't, doesn't connect to that, but let's say I want to do a, a synth sound here. Yeah, let's do some leads. Here we go. There we go. Then this should work with. Yeah. So let's. I'll do another one here that I did. Here's. Uh, here's jump. So you can program in all these chords. And that's the thing that was kind of hard with, with, with the other one, the Orpheon. It does one note at a time. And I was just looking around for, I need something that can play chords. Like, so a kid, a kid can play um, the chords of a song along with, with, the, uh, with other students, you know. And so um, so great, great app, you know. $15, a little on the pricey side, but for being able to control... Uh, uh, program chords. I love it. And it's easy to, easy to program. So really, really fun app. Drum jam is similar. Sorry about that. Drum jam is similar to thumb jam. And the thing I really like about drum jam is that, um, it kind of, it's real easy to do. Uh, first of all, the sounds are cool, but it's also easy to do, um, quantized playing. You know, so so if the if the beat's going along like this, you know, this is going to be playing a drum sound, but just drag it. I'm just going to drag my finger across it. I'm just going back and forth across this, these pads, and I'm able to play along with it in tempo. And so, for the students that may have a little harder time being able to have control of their of their fingers, that's a nice thing to do. AUMI, and this is an interesting one. Um, what's it stand for? Uh, adaptive Musical Interface. And so what this is, is that it uses the camera, and then, like, I'll put it on my, let's say, on my nose, by touching there, and then just moving it back and forth will play different sounds and this is set up to have like four you know five grids but there's also different setups where you can go up and down and you can do different instruments like drums and strings and things like that you know you can even set it up so the camera is across the room and so you tap on one person that person can go back and forth maybe someone who's in a wheelchair and you you tap them on the wheelchair and then someone can help them in the wheelchair going back and forth and making the music that way and so um so it's kind of, it, it's kind of cool, you know. It, it's not it's not like perfect, but it is something that has a um, a little fun. It's fun to play around with. Launchpad is is a looper, and just like there's a there's a there's loops on 
garage band and or like Ableton where you play the play the loops and the kick can be like the, the, it's kind of like the DJ what up what up what up And um, and you can control it with a with a launch any kind of launch pad. This is uh, one of the more basic launch pads. But you can connect it up to um, connect it up to the iPad, and the kids can play the loops that way. So it's a real quick, instant way to do some music. But um, but it is music making because they're trying. You know, they have to make decisions about what comes for, what comes first what comes next um how to end it what to put in places and the thing i like about that is that um students get to make decisions because it's there's something i'm kind of um it, it means a lot to me is that when students are doing music that they they make decisions about the music or they make decisions about what they're doing with the music attaching a, attaching a shaker to a kid's wrist and then someone taking that kid's wrist and shaking it back and forth and going yeah look you're making music no they're, they're not making music right they're just they're basically someone's using them as a tool so this way students can make that they're making the music they're deciding which which pads to do and decision um, active decision making is, is super important vocal live and uh, ivoxel are uh, vocoders and so um, being able to sing into them and then get a sound going for vocal live um, the uh, kids at my wife's school like playing on this and so i'm going to turn down my microphone and then use the the vocoder that's on here you can start to hear it uh, I think their favorite is the Dizzy Duck. So. Dizzy, Dizzy, yeah, this is the Dizzy Duck vocoder sound. Here is Extreme Chorus. So that's a vocoder so kids can play around with their, with their voices. The other one, uh, is iVoxel and iVoxel is actually was very helpful for a, a student we had uh, in Spectrum Rocks a few years ago that uh, her voice she could just barely speak above a, a whisper but and so when we're like what do you want to do in the group she's like I want to sing and I was like well how how are we going to do that you know like she could she could barely whisper so we used ivoxel we hooked a microphone a headset microphone up to her mouth and so that she could sing uh she could whisper basically and then we had someone else who was uh who was playing on the keyboard we attached a uh, another keyboard to this app and so what she did is she whispered in and she was able to sing uh so i'll turn off my microphone and during that whole time i was just like ah oh, ah oh, ah oh. i mean if i was just using a voice like this and it comes across as as a voice and she was able to sing you know, and, uh, it was just impossible for her to actually generate, uh, physically impossible for her to generate that. So using vocoders for apps uh, for the voice are great. Probably you're used to um, uh, uh, GarageBand if if you've you know had um, if you've had a an iPad or something before. A lot of great things on the iPad. You can do guitars. In fact, I I used it to teach the college students guitar playing and bass playing. Uh, bass, I'm sorry, bass right here, but they can do guitar, you can do smart guitar, you can do keyboards, you can do smart strings, uh, different kinds of uh, 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 international uh, instruments, world instruments, drum set playing, uh, drum machines, uh, inter uh, sorry about that, you know, world drumming, there's a Chinese kit for you, uh, random drum machine things, and then actual beat sequencing where the kids, you know, tap the beat. Uh, drummers that already come along with it, uh, special effects for your voice, uh, 
effects for for a guitar you can plug a guitar in and use the guitar amp sounds which aren't too bad i mean this is all free they also have sound packs so that you can do loopers um, just like i was doing with launchpad you can also do that so and you can do jam sessions with other students so so a lot of great things ipads are great a, a great um great assistive technology uh, instrument now i'm going to get on to some other things first of all the skoog and the skoog is um, let me transition over here uh this is a, a skoog um and unfortunately it was connecting this morning it connected yesterday and then it didn't connect right before we you know, started. So I don't know if it's actually gonna connect. Um, it, it runs off of Bluetooth. And it's basically a MIDI controller with five, with five notes on it. And, uh, and this app that you see right above me, that's the regular Skoog app. But there's another um, Skoog app called Skoog Scratch. Um, and this one actually is probably my favorite of the two. I think I can use this even without connecting. Um, and what you do is you these you see these five um, five little squares on the screen above me, and you can hold down one and, and talk into it. Hey, 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 hey! Welcome, Welcome to, to Chicago. Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. And it actually starts right at the beginning of whatever you say, so I can wait a little bit. How's the weather? How's the weather? How's the weather? How's the weather? And it trims it down. And so hey, when I push the buttons on the screw, welcome to Chicago. Hey, welcome to Chicago. Weather. Then you can do that. You can how's actually turn it into a scratching thing where it's a scratch disc. I don't know if I can. How's the weather? How's the weather? I don't think How's I can do it on here. But what would happen is on the screw, you push in and out, and it's scratching like like you would on a on a turntable. And so that's uh, that's the Skoog scratch. So not working today the price has come down it used to be a lot more expensive the rolly block this is the rolly block and this is something that um, I really didn't think I I would like I mean I, I bought it and uh, it was I was like okay I don't really get it you know it's just it makes you know it plays sounds and um, it's like I don't think students are gonna I don't think kids are gonna like it you know, and they ended up liking it. And so you can you can hold down like one page of this is is like or beats. But then you can switch to another page and it's bass. You switch to another page and it's chords. And then you switch to another page and it's lead. You know, and you can play on one note and go change it, modify it, or you can slur between the two. And I was like, I didn't really get it, but then like the kids got it and they held it in their hands and they used their thumbs. And they really dug it. And it just feels cool. It's got kind of a squishy feel to it. You know, I was like, oh. Okay, all right, it's cool. So this is actually one of the more favorite ones that kids like to play with. Um, there is an, another app that no longer really works with on iPads anymore, but it, it had a cool look to it, you know. It, had, it was just cool to, to watch. And so that's the really light block. That's Christian playing with it. The Artiphone. Um, this is the instrument one. So this is by Artiphone, and it's called an it's called an instrument one, and uh, yeah, I'm sure the second one's gonna be instrument two, and it does have an onboard speaker to it, uh, but it can be a guitar, it can be a piano, it can be a drum set. Um, let me plug it. So it's got like frets to it. They're like raised rubber, except they're equal distant apart. So if you're a guitar player and you're like, it should get smaller as it gets closer, it doesn't, you know. 
but they are, you can do the chords. And you can also do some, some plucking too. So it's got guitar, it's got violin, it doesn't sound all that great. Apparently you can put it on your shoulder and play it that way. They're just rubber knobs here at, at the top. Um, push again, you can play a piano. So I'm just playing on piano that way, just by pushing the pads. They're just rubber pads that you're pushing on. But then you can also do a drum set. So it has a bunch of different drum sounds. And these are all programmable. So you can program, you can program this in. So if I want for kids to do a quick, easy drum set, you can do that. Uh, it's got, you can actually do, this is smart ukulele. This is programmed also where all you have to do is push down the first box and strum and you get the one chord, go to the fourth box, you get the four chord, fifth box. And all you have to do is just push down somewhere, somewhere in that box and you get the chord. So two, five, one. And all you have to do is just push down, just push down, and that's that's all all you have to do. Uh, we use this a lot uh, for bass playing, so this is the bass. So, and you can program again each pad. All right, so that is, uh, and yeah, so very programmable, nice easy thing to, to do. It can sit across the lap, it can sit on a floor, um, and kids can, um, kids do like playing on that one. That's a fun one to play on. Orba, this is also made by Artifone. And this is a really cool, a really cool thing. Um, it's just a hundred dollars and you can um, play it as a drum. Turn the volume up here. It also has, you can hit it on the side. Or you can play it as a bass. Oh, sorry. Bass. Chords. Or as a lead. And you can actually sequence stuff. So you can record. You know, you can pop in your headphones, you could walk home and put the, in fact, I think I was walking home from office. Dave Wish gave me a call while I was playing on this, you know, and it was just like, I was like, what are you doing? You know, but it was just, it was just a great, it's a great thing to play around with, you know, just as a pentatonic sound. It's got haptic touch, so it kind of vibrates when you, when you touch it. And it's, it's not rubbery, it's, it's slick. So it's real easy to just run your, run your fingers around that. So that, I love this. I love this Orba. Um, unfortunately, it came in right before um, COVID. Uh, and so I haven't really had a chance for the kids to play on it yet to see see what they think. <laughs> I, I think they're going to like it. Spectrums. Uh, the price, 
the price of these has come down a lot. Uh, I was playing on them at the beginning uh, of the session. And this uses a light emitting uh, light sensors to be able to um, to be able to play on any color. So whatever color it plays on. Um, yeah, I'm connected. So, um, and this one actually has loops on it. But this is just one of the apps. There's also another app uh, that's called Spectrum's EDU. And this one is actually, um, you can like play a drum set. Create a project, here we go. And I'll just do a jazz kit, there we go. But the cool thing about this, you put them on your fingers, you know, or you can put on a drumstick. But let's say I want to turn my shirt into a hi-hat. I tap on my shirt and you'll see how it changes the color to that shirt. And then you're like, what do you want that to be? I want it to be that hi-hat. And now I want my uh, shorts to be the, the snare drum. So I'm going to have, have kind of bass shorts and there we go. So. So you can do whatever colors you want. In fact, you can use dry erase markers on a dry, on dry erase board and, and the kids play on those colors, you know, or you can do, um, you can do sticky notes. So whatever colors they want, you know, they just play on, play on the colors and, uh, they have a good time doing that. So that's, and so you can print out different, um, different, uh, types of, um, uh, you know, like um, songs with different colors and the kids play on those as long as you have a color printer or you can, you know, color it in yourself with a, with a pen and that would work just as well. I don't have a jam box, but this is a wind controller for $400. Uh, undergrad student of mine wrote a grant and got one and you, you blow into it and move it across and it's for, uh, for people that, that maybe only have, uh, only have use of their, um, of their head, you know, for, for being able to make music. So that's the jam box, the power guitar, and um, the power guitar is uh, is just basically a guitar with three strings, and I'm going to let's see where is it. Where this is play a video about the power guitar. I was inspired by Ruth LeMay and her three strings ensemble at Southwest High School in Minneapolis where the kids play on three string guitars. And so I decided to make a three string guitar also. We call it the power guitar because it only plays uh, power chords. So we string it to E, B, and E. So the A and the D string are up a step. Just power chords. And used uh, electrical tape for all the different colors. Um, for the first 12 frets on the fretboard. When you add in a distortion pedal, it's got a cool sound to it. And just like Ruth May does with her students, it works really well for playing across your lap. One of the cool things about calling it a power guitar is that it's for everybody. It's not a special guitar, it's a power guitar. So everyone wants to play the power guitar regardless of their abilities. Here's an example of the Google Slides that can be used to build your own power guitar chart and an example of a power guitar chart using just the colored blocks. So 
the power guitar inspired by Ruth LeMay and their three strings ensemble at Southwest High School. Uh, next is a rollout drum set. And uh, this is, uh, it, it's called the rock and roll drum set, but I think you can buy other versions of it. And turn it down a little bit. Uh, nice, you can play on it with sticks. You can actually use drumsticks to, to play on it. But it's, it makes for like an easy drum fill. So it's just, it just feels good. And then, so if you're looking for an easy thing for a kid to play, to play on a drum pad without having to really use sticks or anything, but you can use sticks if you want. So that is a kids kids do like playing on that one too. If they if they like how it feels, then it's going to be better for them. Uh, the um, We've also used a, a rollout piano key, uh, keyboard, and this is for students in a wheelchair. So you see that's a girl with a wheelchair, and the kids kids like walking on it. But the also the they also roll their friend across on the on the on the keyboard. Um, not too expensive, you know, around sixty dollars for for it. But kids can get up and be active and and be making music along with um, with all their friends as well. So when I do put music together, just this is a little more on the pedagogical side. You know, kids are playing music. I, I, I don't, I'm not talking in chords and stuff like that. I'll be talking in beats and low sounds, which is the bass, fast sounds, which might be more harmony and stuff like that, long sounds. You know, so we get someone to play the fast sounds, someone to play the long sounds, someone to play the low sounds, and we put all that, we put all that music together. Another, uh, this isn't necessarily an app, whoops, <laughs> this isn't an app, but the Chrome Music Lab is, is something you can put up on a screen and kids can write their name, they can draw designs, and they can make music as well. So a really cool assistive technology. And the last thing, and this is not, <laughs> it's like, whoa, that's kind of expensive. This is the a DJ cart that I, I made at my wife's school using um, iPads, mixer, power supply, and it basically has a, a, a a DJ, like a turntable controller on it, but it also has the spectrums. Um, it has a drum pad that you can play on. The kids can play on a, uh, you can actually have five kids playing at one time. One kid on the, on the launch pad, one kid scratching, another kid playing on the uh, drum pad. And then there's a couple wireless mics and one wired mic. Um, so the kids can, can do that. I put it all on one of those rock and roller carts. Um, you know, those that you use for moving equipment and, um, and so that kids can just wheel that out the hall. That's one thing, you know, with schools, you, you, especially you have a small classroom, you got to be able to move stuff places. So this is the the DJ cart. Also has a, a DJ light that's up up top. You see that in the upper right. has little laser things that shoots on the thing. So when kids are playing the music, it's sound activated, and it creates this, uh, it creates this sound. So anyway, uh, if you uh, use the link... It's in the chat, and maybe I'll, I'll paste it back in there again. It has links, the, the links to all the apps and all the uh, the devices as well. So, and I finished on time for questions. Hopefully, I yes, I did get that okay. All right. Uh, how many different devices at one time? Um, maybe four or five. You know, not on the same iPad. You'd have to get multiple iPads. A lot of these things are, if you notice, I'm using iPads uh, just because they seem like they're a lot more common uh, in schools. And so I'd like one iPad per device. And so I might have one SKU going on one iPad and then, um, you know, uh, light block on another iPad. I I'm, I'm, can't wait to be using this with kids. Um, but in just a regular classroom setting, yeah, four or five kind of sitting around um, on a table playing on those. Not too bad. I don't know why the SKU isn't working, but you know, when, when you do run into problems with technology where things aren't working, um, then like, like f for instance, after today, it's like, I'm not sure I'm going to go back to this ever because like if it didn't work now, yeah, maybe it works again the next time on a different iPad or a different, I have three of these SKUs that I use, but if the technology is unstable, then you just don't want to use it. Uh, amplifying different devices. Um, 
sometimes I'll run them through one mixer, but some but kids actually like to have the sound right next to them. So if they're playing on this, it's it's uncomfortable to have the sound coming from far away. So I just get those little small like Bluetooth speakers and and connect them up with a cable so they can have it right nearby. You know, may plug it into the iPad. Uh, the iPads, the speakers get loud enough, so sometimes just using the iPad is is okay. But um, but those small speakers, like if I'll be going through Target and they're like five dollars for these speakers, I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get <laughs> get one of those and then plug them into the iPad. Uh, for performances, um, for performances, I, I what I'll do is probably uh, use like a direct input box. And then so they have a monitor in front of them, but then that sound has to go out to the to the audience so the sound person can, can mix the sound. Um, because it's just kind of impossible for the for the kid to worry about their sound at the same what the mix is like. So they'll go directly in and they'll they'll have like a little monitor there. It could be that same speaker that they used before, but but the, the sound guy's gonna handle the stuff that's or woman is gonna handle the stuff that's out, out in front. Oh, we actually have a question here for you. Oh, I'm wondering, geez. hey, sorry, I'm, I'm asking slightly. I was wondering if you fit this into your actual curriculum with your college students and how. <laughs> Jeez. I, well, right now for college students, it's like a one day thing. It's like, okay. oh, here's this, you know, no, basically like what you would see, you know, and, and it's pretty overwhelming, you know, right. and especially for the students. Um, it's it, you know they haven't student taught yet and so they're just like well how am i gonna how am i gonna use this like how many students am i gonna have with special needs and and and, and they're they're just kind of not thinking in that at that point yet that they're gonna have students with special needs or they want to have students with special needs so they might be looking at at these devices as well that would be nice if if i do if I do happen to have a student with special needs in my choir and my band, maybe they could use this to play along with the band and stuff like that. And I'm going, I'm trying to get across, get across the, the, the idea of, no, that's not the point. The point is you try <laughs> to seek out the students so they can, they can make music this way. Not to just, um, not just how can, how can this adapt to what the kids are doing in your band class? So it's really hard, Jill. It is yeah. it's hard to get well, that. I was that wondering if you had some sort of project that you had them do, complete, or outside of class. Yeah. Uh, and even, <laughs> even for the students in the special <clears throat> project, it's it's difficult. Um, we have time for one more question. Oh, what can you do with the launch pad? Okay, well, the launch pad can hook up to the launch pad app on the iPad. That's awesome. It can work with Ableton. Uh, which is there's a, like a, a light version Ableton Light, which I think is, um, I think it might be free, and so you can use that for for programming in loops and things like that. I haven't, I don't know if I've gotten to work with the, with the GarageBand, but the Launchpad for sure. Um, oh, and it works with the DJ app. So the DJ, it's called DJ, and DJ, um, I I use it with the turntable right for for doing loops and this works with that so so you can have like two controllers on that dj app one for for scratching and then one for doing the loops like that and so this works really this works really good and this isn't the fancy one you know they get much fancier than this so i love these i love these things they're just they're so fun and they're they're touchy and stuff like that so. all right well i think that's it right we're uh, yeah, just about out of time. But uh, I'll, you, you, so I'll much. you and I. So email me if you if you have any other questions or stuff like that. Thanks a lot for coming to my <laughs> session. Yeah, Jill, cool round of applause. Still enjoy Chicago. So have some pizza for me.